Now with Mongoose setup, it's time to actually create data, which we can see to seed some data. And to do this, I will first define the model of the data. So I will create a new directory here in my project file, and I will call this folder models. Now in this models folder, I will store all my mongoose models because I said mongoose uses schemas to define the data with which we work. And later on, I will use the defined models here to then interact with the data and easily work with it while having this validation in place since we defined how the data should look like. So in the models folder, I will create a new file and I will just name this product.js because I will define the model of a product in this file. The first thing is I will import mongoose here too with require mongoose. And then I will create another variable here called schema with a capital S. Of course, the name is up to you, but that is a good convention here. And this will just use mongoose's schema uh, object here. With that schema, I can create a new schema. Notice the lowercase s at the beginning by simply running new schema. And then as an argument, I pass a JavaScript object defining that schema or describing that schema. So here I define how the data I work with should look like. Now, what should a product have or what does it currently have in our application? If we go back to the application, we have this product image. We will have a title. We'll have a description and of course we'll, hold, we'll have a price. Now to keep this app simple, I'll leave the price in dollars by default and I won't define currencies. So I will not have a multi-currency app here. So we got these four fields here, image, title, description and price. Let's set them up here. The image will more be like an image path because we'll not store the actual image in the database, but a path to that image. Therefore, and I define the type or the, uh, I define this key, this field, this field in the, in the collection or in the document by using a JavaScript object here as a value. This will have a type of string since it will be a path and I will make this required. So I will always need this image path. There aren't products without images. Now, of course, you could set this up in a different way, but that's the way I will go with in this application. Next, I will duplicate this because title is exactly the same definition as is description. And now regarding the price, I will make this a number. So this defines the schema and the schema is the blueprint we will use for each new entry we enter into the database. However, this blueprint is, well, as I say, just a blueprint. It will not be with which we work in our application. We will work with models. However, those models will be based on this blueprint. Now to make this happen and to, to do this, I will export something from that file here with model exports because of course I want to be able to import the functionality of this file and other files of my application. And what I will export here is mongoose and then the model function. And this model method here allows me to specify the name of the model. I will name it product here. And then the schema on which this model should be based. And this is of course the schema I defined up here. And with that, I'm using my blueprint to actually create a model with which I can work. So this is set up. The next step is to actually seed some data into this database so that we have something to work with. Now there are different ways you could do this. You can install some external packages which make seeding simple or like I will do here, you write your own seeder because it's no rocket science. And if it would be, you would learn a lot, right? So great thing. So I will create a new directory, which I will call seed. And in this directory, I will create a new file and I will call this file product seeder. Now there are different setups you could choose here and um, this should have cap up case, but I will go with that. It's totally up to you though. So I will create a seeder per um, model. You could have one seeder for all the data, but for now I will go with that approach here. So I will import my product model 
by simply requiring the, the file in the models folder where I export this model. So I will navigate there, models, product. Notice that I don't have the .js at the end. You never have that when requiring other files in Node.js. And next step is I will create a new product. So I will create product, a new variable, which will be a new product, the model I import here. And then I pass JavaScript object with the data, with the actual data I want to write into the database. So I will give this um, an image path and I will just pick the path um, of my view. So the Harry Potter image or Gothic, Harry Potter was in the Laravel app. So the Gothic game, just add this path here. Next step, I will add a title. Give this a name Gothic since this is the title of the game or Gothic video game. And next, the description. Awesome game, of course. And more exclamation marks. Always make a message more meaningful. So always put as many exclamation marks where you as you can. Sarcasm off. So with that, next field is the price. And I'll just give this a price of $10. Now, this will create one product. However, I want multiple products. How do I do this? There are a lot of ways you could do that. I will go with the following. I will make this products an array like this. And next step is I will simply create multiple products like this. New product, another new product. Now, I don't want to have Gothic all over the place, but I also don't want to bore you with me typing or searching for fitting products here for the next 10 minutes. So I'm going to quickly fill this out and then be right back. With that array of products, I want to store all the products in the database. Now, how, how do I do this? Well, I will simply loop through all these products. So loop through. Um, as long as we have products in this area to, well, to use. And then I want to, well, store it in here. Now I can simply call products save because the save method with uh, Mongoose allows me to save a model to the database. So Mongoose will then create a new collection for that model. So for let's say the product model, model, it will create a products collection. And into this collection, it will then insert or save this new document. So it's like with MySQL where you have database tables and entries. Here you have collections and documents. So it will create a new document with the save command based upon the data I work with here. However, this doesn't work here because Mongoose or MongoDB will not be connected to this application. Now you could say, well, we're connecting it to the app.js file, right? Yes, we are, but the seeder will not be run in the normal application. It will not be running all the time during runtime because that's something I only want to do here during development or at the beginning, but not, it's not a normal part of the application. So I will manually run this file with, um, no chairs. And in order to do this, I need to connect to Mongoose inside of this file here. So I will quickly do this, require Mongoose here. And then of course, copy the connect logic from the app.js file. And at the end of the file, I will disconnect. Also, I spotted a little error I had in, um, when I created this model, this should be module exports. I had model exports, which is not correct. Too many models in my head. So modules. If I do it like this, what will happen? Okay, this products area is created. We start with this loop. We save the products, then we disconnect. No, that's not going to happen. Saving to the database is asynchronous. What will happen is we will start this loop. We will loop through all the items and initiate the saving for each item. But then we will continue to the disconnecting. 
and chances are high that we will disconnect before all the items have been saved. Therefore, this is not the right place for the disconnect, uh, disconnect method here. I should disconnect in the callback of this save function here. However, that would also not be the right place because then I would disconnect um, well, on each object here. So for, for the first one, for the second one and so on. So that also doesn't work. How can we fix this? I will implement a little helper variable, which I'll call done, which is zero at the beginning. And then in the callback of each save um, operation here, where I either have a, an error or a result. In this callback here, I will increment done by one. And then I will check if done is equal to products length. So if we just finished with the last item in the array and uh, therefore I have to increment first because the product's length will be not starting at zero like the index, but instead if uh, an array has five items, the length is five, but the last item has the index four. Keep that in mind. Therefore I'm incrementing it first. So if this is equal, I know that I'm done. And then I call and call the exit function, which I will define down here, function exit. And in this function, I will disconnect. Now this should work. So if I navigate into the seed folder and run my product seed or JS file, and then I will go to my server and I will open a new terminal and also navigate into that MongoDB binary folder and I will run Mongo. So not MongoD, which was the server, but just Mongo, which is the client, a shell client here. I do this to have a look into the database. So I will use my shopping database then I access a collection by typing db dot um, products. Since I said mongoose will create collections which have a, well the, the pluralized um, name of the model. So if the model is product, this will be products lowercase. And then the find method to see all documents in this collection. And this looks pretty good. So with that the data is in the database. I got my CEDA working. And the next thing I want to do is, of course, output those items in my or on my index view.